Chapter 14 Ares, the manly man's manly man. Ares is that guy. The one who stole your lunch money, teased you on the bus, and gave you a wedgie in the locker room. The one who breaks other kids' bones in varsity football and makes a D minus in every class, but is still popular because it's so funny when he gives the scrawny kids swirlies in the toilet. If bullies, gangsters, and thugs prayed to a god, they'd pray to Ares. As soon as he was born, his parents knew he was bad news. Hera and Zeus wanted to love him because he was their first child. But instead of being cute or saying goo goo or even crying for mama, the baby came out raging and shaking his little fists. Hera could hardly keep hold of him as she held him up for Zeus to see. My lord, she said, your newborn son. Zeus reached down to tickle the baby's chin. Ares grabbed his dad's finger with both hands and twisted it. Snap! The baby pounded his tiny chest and yelled, Rawr! Zeus examined his immortal finger, which was now dangling at a funny, funny angle. You know, perhaps we should get the boy a nanny. Good idea, Hera said. A strong, strong, large nanny, with lots of patience and good medical insurance. They hired a lady named Thero. She must have been like a mountain nymph or something, because she was tough and strong and nothing bothered her. She took Ares into the land of Thrace, a harsh rocky place just north of Greece, full of snow and jagged mountains and warlike tribes, the perfect spot for a baby combat god. As Ares grew, he never cried for his bottle or his binky. He roared for blood. Early on, he learned to chuck rocks at birds and knock them out of the sky. He pulled the wings off of insects to practice his fine motor skills. He would laugh and laugh as he learned to walk by stepping on flowers and crushing small animals. Meanwhile, Thero sat on a rock nearby, reading her Olympian gossip magazines and yelling, Keep it down, you little delinquent! Yes, those were happy days. Eventually, Ares grew up and returned to Mount Olympus to take his rightful place on the Olympian Council. Of course, he became the god of war. And just a friendly warning, if you ask him whether he's that dude from the video game God of War, he'll rip your arm off and beat you over the head with it. He also became the god of violence, bloodlust, weapons, bandits, pillaging, leveling cities, and good old-fashioned family fun. He was the god of strength and manly courage, too. Which is kind of funny, since the few times he actually got into one-on-one -on -one combat with another god, he ran away like a coward. I guess that's typical of bullies. Ares was the first one to flee when the storm giant Typhoeus came knocking. Another time, during the Trojan War, he got stabbed in the gut by a Greek mortal spear. He roared so loud it sounded like a thousand men. Then he fled back to Mount Olympus, crying and moaning to Zeus. It's not fair! It's not fair! Zeus told him to shut up. If you, were my, if you weren't my son, the sky god rumbled, I'd have stripped away your godliness and kicked you to the curb years ago. You are nothing but trouble. Heartwarming. How the Olympian families got along so well. Despite his occasional cowardness, Ares was a bad dude to make angry. When he went into battle, he wore golden armor that burned with harsh light. His eyes were full of flames, and with his war helmet on, he was too scary for most mortals to look at, much less fight. His favorite weapon was a bronze spear. His shield always dripped with blood and gore, because that's just kind of the friendly guy he was. When he didn't feel like walking, Ares rode a war chariot pulled by four fire-breathing horses. His twin sons, Phobos and Demios, fear and panic, were his usual charioteers, holding the reins and amusing themselves by seeing how many people they could run over. Fifty points if you can smash that line of archers, a hundred points if you can hit that old dude. You can see why Ares' sacred animal was the wild boar, which will charge anything, is Im almost impossible to kill, and has major attitude. One of his sacred birds was the vulture, since it feasted on corpses after a battle. His favorite reptile was the poisonous snake. In a lot of pictures, you'll see Ares holding one, or he'll have one painted on his shield. Ares did not have a sacred flower. Go figure. In addition to his apartment on Olympus, where he liked to hang out with his girlfriend Aphrodite, Ares had his own fortress in the mountains of Thrace. It was the very first and ultimate man cave.